Hey teacher friends, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to bring you guys a requested video today and it's something that I am passionate about as well and it is about bringing in art into the classroom. I recently went to a teaching conference. It was an amazing teaching conference. Um, you will see the vlog on that if you haven't already. I'm not sure the order of these videos, but I was just surprised by how many teachers out there don't have an art program at their school and that's heartbreaking for me so I just want to make it more of a passion of mine to share with you ideas and things you can do to bring art into the classroom that are easy that have a easy cleanup that are not going to be too demanding on you um just things that like my go-to's for like easy simple supplies that still get the job done and still are amazing teaching tools so if you are a classroom teacher if you are an art teacher if you are a mom who wants to do art and crafts with their kids i mean this video is for you i have five different art supplies that are like my go-to for tools that just make life so much easier so i cannot wait to share them with you going to be sharing with you the supply but I'm also going to be showing you how it works because I don't know about you but I am a visual person and I need to see it so I want to demonstrate for you guys like how they actually work not just talk about them too so you'll get to see kind of me explaining but also me doing um, and the first one has to do with paint paint is a lot <laughs> at times because it just depends like if you don't have paint organization it can be a mess. You have to deal with pouring out the paint into cups. What do you do with the extra? Like there's ways to do it that is smooth sailing, but there's just an easier way, especially if you don't want to worry about the mess. Um, now, if you're an art teacher, you know, I feel like students still need those skills with regular uh, temper paint, actually like bottles right back there. So there's a lot of hacks and things for art teachers um, in order to be organized with your supplies. And I can do a totally other video about that. But for this video, I just wanted to be like, simple supplies. I do use these often because I don't have any break in between classes. So it just depends on the lesson. These supplies are going to allow your kids to be creative, problem solve, think outside the box. You know, like it's so important to let kids be creative and discover and to fail sometimes and know that that's okay. And I just feel like it is so important to have that in your classroom. So if you're not simply because you're scared to use some of these tools or you don't want to deal with the mess or you don't feel artistic yourself, it's just like not your wheelhouse. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this video will help you know what to purchase, what to get, just to make it that much easier. If you have not heard of paint cakes yet, they are amazing. So I have two sets. I have these ones and then I have these fluorescent colors. The fluorescent colors are really honestly beautiful, but they work like watercolors where you need water to get them working. Like right now they are just completely dry. And so you don't have to worry about paint that is left over and you're not wasting it. They just use whatever they need and then it dries back up and then you can just stack these up in a um, cabinet or something and you're good to go. If they get a little like dingy, you can just rinse them out. And then also this tray is yours to keep. I mean, you can just re fill these um that catalog i get them from dick blake and i believe like the link below but the catalog i get them from you can just buy the cakes themselves or you can buy these and then they even have stands for these too i don't have the stands i just feel like i don't need it but if you want to set these out somewhere you could do that as well but basically all you do is you take your brush you dip it into the water you go back to the paint and you swivel it around grab some paint they mix just like regular paints they are just regular regular paints it's just a much neater organized way to distribute paints to your tables okay so this is kind of another paint substitute um i would say it's a little farther from paint than the paint cakes um but it's still a really cool tool so it's called quick sticks and it is a solid temper paint now it glides onto the paper so I really demonstrate with the students that you do not need to push down hard I kind of say it's like similar to a glue stick where if you push down hard you will wreck it um, and it rolls up just like a glue stick does the cap 
this is the only thing I don't like, the cap does not fit on the back. So I have my kids take care of it by putting it in the palm of their hand and they hold it. But other than that, I love these so much and they mix too. This is such a good thing to be teaching kindergarten mixing colors. Um, it's just so fun. They love using these and the colors are so vibrant. Also, Quick Sticks comes in class packs, which is phenomenal. So I got two of those at the beginning of the year. I've only dived into one so far. So um, for one classroom, you probably only need one or you could even get, they have smaller, I believe, little uh, quantities of these instead of getting the whole class pack. The best magic trick that has to deal with art are watercolor crayons. If you've never used watercolor crayons before, oh, they are so amazing. And to watch the students' eyes light up, when they change from crayon to paint, it's it's magical. So what you do is you take the watercolor crayons, and there's all different brands. I think I have the Sargent Art ones, but you take the crayon, you color like normal, and now I do tell the kids you have to fill in your space. So it's also teaching students to be neat with their work and to do their best work, because if they don't fill in, if they just kind of scribble in, when they go to add water to this, it won't turn to paint. So it's trying to enforce them to really do a good job and take their time. Once they fill in their area with the crayon, then you can go in with just a paintbrush and water and it, boom, becomes watercolor paint and it'll mix with the color next to it. I've done this for a color mixing lesson before where a student put on red and then put on yellow um, and you can see it change a little bit, but then when they go to add the water, they are so amazed and sometimes I don't even technically teach color mixing I just let them experiment with the crayons first and then they discover the colors on their own but it is still a great way if you are like I said at home with your kids or a classroom teacher like the difference in this and actually getting watercolors out um, and doing all that like I just find this to be a lot easier and it's easier for the kids to control because they're using the crayon to actually put the color on and the water just kind of spreads it around a little bit my next easy supply takes a little bit of practice for yourself and for the students but once you get the hang of it once they experiment with it um, it's a really really great tool and that is an bingo dauber filled with ink and a little bit of water um, so you could probably just put paint in here but I have used India ink and what you do is you pry off the top with like some pliers you put in the ink just a tiny bit of water and then the ink comes out of the little pad the bingo dauber so it creates a beautiful clean black line for any outlining or um, if you want to practice their letters like there's so many things you can do with this I use it a ton because then the lines stand out so well now they probably have different sizes for bingo daubers but the ones I have I gravitate towards using a larger paper for my projects I wouldn't suggest using like a small paper for this um, but it's a great way to create art quickly too because it's just it makes such a quick smooth line um, however you need to demonstrate this like crazy because if the kids push down if they squeeze it at all you're gonna have a mess so as long as you have good management with it this is gonna be an amazing tool I went quick and grabbed the ink that I use so this is the Higgins waterproof drawing ink black India ink honestly any type of ink would work and like I said you could probably just use paint too I've never tried that but I'm sure if you maybe put some water down paint in there um, it will work just as well the last supply is probably not a new one I mean I feel like most of you probably have heard about this or have used it yourself but it is still one of my favorites and it is the Crayola model magic I <laughs> I have a kiln in my room and I do do clay with my um, students however this is just such a fun and easy way to get the kids manipulating with their hands and creating a 3D lesson without having to deal with all that goes into clay. So Model Magic is so soft and foamy. And I think the most important part about teaching clay is really getting the students to be thinking three-dimensionally and to be working with their hands. And there's a lot of students who do great with that type of lesson versus a two-dimensional lesson. So using clay in some shape or form, even in the classroom, is so good and it's a way to get them thinking a little bit differently. A lot of students who are not good at drawing, who are not comfortable with that, really thrive when they get clay in their hands. So Model Magic 
is air dry. You can paint it afterwards. You can use um, the paint cakes that I showed you earlier to paint. You can use regular paint, watercolors, and it holds up really well. It's just, it's amazing, amazing clay substitute. And even if you teach an older grade, they still love Model Magic and they can still do so much with it. So um, I have little things that my sixth graders actually made because they are doing a design your own board game and they needed like little pieces for their board game. So here is a little ice cream cone and then a little like, I think it's hot chocolate she said because it has little marshmallows in it. And then here, and here's a little monkey on a model magic. And then here's this little guy, a sixth grader made it for his board game as well. So I just, I love model magic so much. I've done a lot of projects in the past with model magic. They've all been pretty successful. And you don't have to worry either about the kids taking the clay home and it breaking because I feel like it holds up a lot better um, when it dries and everything. It's so light too, so it's not heavy. It's easier for the kids to manage. It's Crayola is the best. I just, I love this stuff. You can get these in different colors. I get them in white because I like my kids to paint them, but they absolutely have a bunch of different colors that you could get if you're interested in that. All right, you guys, those are my five main favorite, like easy cleanup art supplies that I just absolutely love. I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope it helps you. And leave a comment below if you have any other questions on how to use this stuff. I will link the supplies if I can find them online. I will link them in the description box so you can just grab them there. But they're really good tools for the kids. It's so easy to use them. And then you're bringing creativity into your classroom, which is so, so important. All right, you guys, if you are not subscribed, do that before you go. Hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my future videos. Videos, and also give this video a thumbs up before you leave. I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye!